um, Pro Macro, two of my research services, on the global business cycle. And I particularly focus not on the data that's out today, you know, where we are in GDP growth, but where we're going, where we're going in inflation, where we're going in unemployment. My forward looking indicators, which are like financial conditions that I've built based on the rate of change of the dollar, the rate of change of interest rates, the rate of change of commodity prices, from whether it's PPI, whether it's there's so many things, they are pointing to the fastest deceleration of data that I think I've ever seen in the shortest period of time. So what we're facing is a recession, which most people know, but I think the speed at which it happens is much faster than people expect. So we're starting to see some of the regional Fed surveys falling apart. But what I'm really looking at is the ISM survey, the Institute of Supply Management. That's a survey of basically buyers in large corporations and industrial companies about how they see conditions. They tend to do a very good job of tracking the business cycle. GDP follows it. Now, there's this magic number, which is 47. 47 is the level at which it has a 100% chance of recession. Now, we're still in the 50s, low 50s, but all of the forward-looking stuff is going down to 47 for the shorter term stuff, i.e. the next couple of months, we should go 47 and maybe below, maybe 45. But the forward-looking stuff gets down as low as 35. So we're talking negative two and a half, negative 3% GDP prints. And that would be, it should be bottoming by my work by about February, March next year. So the economy is about to go off a cliff. And I don't think the market is yet prepared for it. So let's go back to this Jackson Hole thing. What did they tell you? They didn't tell us anything new. They said, we really want to get to 4% and hold it there depending on the data. Well, the bond market, if I look at at euro dollars or Fed funds, they're already at 4%. So the market's priced that. So there's nothing new. So I think, okay, there's nothing new there. So... If the economy starts getting weaker, because the Fed said they will be more data dependent, then we'll see the bond market starting to price in lower rates in the future. So I'm looking at that. And then the Fed said, well, they will change their mind if inflation comes down a lot and unemployment goes up. So the forward-looking inflation data is already falling fast. My work suggests it could go negative in 18 months, which is something I've been talking about a while when I've been looking at, for example, the example of 1947, when people all came out of World War II, went back into the labor force, much like the pandemic. We had no supply because nobody was making everything because everybody was at war. We had this prices went up 20 percent, 18 months later, negative 3 percent. Then it had a rebound effect and then balanced out. I think we've got something similar playing out now, which is contrary to the narrative that we've got sticky inflation. Everyone looks at the 1970s, that's what we're doing again. Unless the Fed crush it, they're Arthur Burns, and we're going to ruin it. Well, in the 1970s, we had this massive demographic boom that kicked in just at the wrong point, which was the baby boomers entering the workforce. We have the opposite. We have, in 2023, the record peak number of people hitting 65 in the US labor force. And that means peak retirees. So we've got peak retirees happening, and we've got demand destruction driven by this economic cycle. So the forward-looking inflation data to me looks like, if I look at commodities, I look at a bunch of things like um, new orders versus inventories in ISM, that they go negative. Okay, that's the extreme. That's actually my base case. Maybe I'm wrong, but inflation is coming down significantly and very fast. So the next part is the employment question. And again, when I look at forward-looking employment stuff, just the housing surveys alone, housing is the fifth largest employer in America. It looks like that they will start laying off workers pretty fast because they've got massive inventories. Everybody from Amazon to Walmart said, we've got too much inventory. They're all laying off staff. Everybody's starting to lay off staff. All the tech companies are laying off staff. So I think we're going to start to see unemployment and inflation falling, the economy falling sharper than people expect. We're already seeing oil weak. We've seen all the commodities weak. Many of them are now uh, negative year on year or close to it. 
So we've got this storm where bond yields are still high. They're actually, most assets year on year map the ISM really well. It's amazing. The business cycle is like this voodoo magic. And many people can see my threads on Twitter. Um, I write about this a lot. Um, I talk about it in Real Vision a lot. Is the year on year rate of change of the SP, the NASDAQ, the bond yields, copper, oil, merging markets, credit spreads, that all map the ISM. So, right now, where are asset markets pricing? Well, interestingly, bond yields are pricing the ISM at 63. So, they're way above where the market is. What does that mean, Ralph, for people who don't follow it fixed means income and that ISM? The bond market is pricing inflation plus growth way far higher than the um, ISM survey itself. Hmm. Now, okay, but that's not consistent with anything else. The S&P is pricing it at 45, full recession. The NASDAQ, 42, bigger recession. Um, growth technology stocks, 35, big recession. Copper, 40, uh, 45. The dollar, which year-on-year -year rate of change also maps, is pricing growth at 40 or just below 40 now. So most asset prices are pricing in a sharp recession. The bond market is not yet doing so. The only other one that's lagging is oil, which is in line with current ISM and not future ISM. Everything else is pricing future ISM, i.e. recession. Oil's not pricing in a recession yet, and the bond market's kind of in la-la land. Now, I usually say the bond market is the truth, but at turning points, it can often be wrong. And it tends to lag because this inflation narrative digs its heels in. And we've seen that in 2000 and 2000. We saw it in 1990. We saw it in 2008. We saw it in 2018. The bond market deviates from ISM. ISM starts falling and then this wily coyote moment and yields start collapsing. Now, why do I care about yields collapsing? Well, I've just told you that asset markets are actually pricing in a full recession. And I know there's a narrative out there that the markets need to price in a lower leg from earnings. But when I look at it in my terms using the business cycle, I think it's already priced lower earnings. So if bond yields start to fall, then financial conditions are easing. And the chances are the growthier end of the world, NASDAQ, crypto, growth technology plays will start outperforming. And we've seen many of those bottom a while ago when bond yields topped. Now, we need to see that play out. Uh, tomorrow, Day after tomorrow is the ISM survey. I'm expecting it to be weaker than expected, but it could play out the following month. You know, economic data, one month to the next isn't a lot of data series or wiggle room. So let's see what happens. For the next couple of months, I'm expecting it to be signaling a full recession. And we'll get to the tipping point where bond yields start to fall. It'll start affecting asset markets. So I'm not a believer we go to new lows. I've done surveys after survey and seen all the surveys on Twitter. 70% of all respondents in crypto and macro think equities go to new lows. Now, if that is the case, then most people are positioned for it. So therefore, the path of pain is the opposite. And I think the markets price that in. So I think there's no certainties in this world. I can be wrong. But my view, the balance of probabilities are for me that the, the uh, risk asset markets, equities, crypto, have bottomed. We are having a retest. And as the economic data shifts and bond yields come down, that'll drive that further. And it'll be a further hated rally because nobody will understand. We're going into a recession. Why are equities going up? Well, because they already priced the recession. It's their job to be forward-looking indicators. So that's kind of the big picture framework. 